way, which is, uh, I can tell you, when it comes to a final in the sevens, an extra three minutes each side for the normal rounds, and that's uh, pretty grueling. And it'll be Wasps then to start with Fred Howard, international panel referee in charge of proceedings. Tom Andrew there, England's fly half, to set this final of the Wang Sevens in motion. So of course a very different style of play you can expect after all the 15s we've been watching. It's all about possession and it's good possession already. This is Tutman. Tutman going for himself, going himself, chased by Eagle. Tutman on the line, loses possession. He could have got there on momentum, but just short with the throw forward. Alex Tuckman, who was a replacement for Steve Pilgrim in an earlier round of this tournament. Well, it looked as they might have made it. John Eagle was the man chasing him. And it was very close this. A good tackle, really, by Eagle that just saved the day for Quinns. So it's a scrum, just the three men on the Quinns line. Richard Moon, formerly Cambridge and Nottingham. He's the uh, playmaker in this Isle of Quinns set. Right on the Queen's line. Rob Andrew, you'll see, is the man to uh, move to the scrum half position with uh, Pilgrim off injured. Carling, the injured man, played through two rounds but seems to have uh, still this per persistent problem. Moon recovers it and away by uh, Thresher. Eagle decided to kick out of trouble. It's not a, a very common tactic in sevens. Back comes Rob Andrew. It's all about support. Great follow up by John Eagle on the halfway line, the tackle. And not released, so that'll be free possession, which uh, is so invaluable in sense. Craig Luxton takes it. This is Winterbottom, who's come on for the final as a placement. This is John Eagle, trying to uh, set up an overlap position. Brings it back. Luxton again, normally scrum half. That's Winterbottom. But useful interception by Andrew. To Tuckman now. Chris Oti there. Covered by Everton Davis. And the whistle goes, and... Uh, those brief breaks are uh, manna from heaven for the players. Three completed rounds each side and 20 minutes in the final. There's Chris Oti, who's leading try scorer with six in this tournament. England's flyer. And the twist and turn, the push and pull that you get in sevens. That's Simon Smith on the switch to OT. Wasp 10 metre line to give you the position. It's Chris Sheesby, now Eagle. Charge down. That's possession for Pegler and Wasps, but a loose pass to Luke Scottman. One missed tackle, one poor pass can uh, create the opening. throw in. New Zealander from Waikato. Great asset to uh, Harlequins this season. That's well won ball by Sheesby. Now Winterbottom. Eagle. Again, the little kick and chase. Covered by OT. OT, tremendous tackle. Good feed on though. There's the support playing its part. Richard Moon with the opening try. First 15 reserve scrum half, but still an excellent sevens exponent and it was the uh, support play that did the work here because although Eagle was well covered by OT, he knew there'd be support, it was perhaps speculative and a bit fortunate in a way but that's what backing up does and that's how you score. So that's how it is after three minutes in this final. Stuart Thresher, England B fullback, London Division fullback. Useful to have a recognised place kicker in your set if you can. To add the points and put added pressure on the Wasps. So Moon with his first try, appropriately timing it for the final. Quinn is the reigning Middlesex Sevens champions. And of course... Uh, this new tournament, well, not just a prelude to the Middlesex Sevens coming up in uh, two weeks' time, but great tournament in its own right. And I'm sure likely to be established as a new permanent fixture in the calendar. Quinns see how they uh, use possession.
try not to commit themselves unnecessarily to try and create the opening. There's two to one there. Puts Pegler under a lot of pressure as uh, Stesha breaks through, but that's Pegler covering back Tupman. Got to get men behind you. Pegler the link. Rather a tidy referee playing advantage for the obvious knock on and uh, good advantage it can prove to be. Everton Davis, hands up OT. Well, there's a particular delight in that, and Everton Davis under the post. That's his third try of the tournament, and credit there to referee Fred Howard for playing advantage from the obvious knock-on, because it can happen so quickly. Well, Hinder's ears back here, and timed his hand off well, as OT went a little high, and that's 10-0 after five minutes. The 28 year old, formerly from the local Twickenham club, Everton Davis, puts Quinns in a very commanding position, but it's a long way to go in sevens. Treasure to make it 12 0. The 25 year old with his uh, 11th conversion in the tournament, Stuart Treasure. Fred Howard, experience of 15s and uh, familiar too with 7s and showing their good judgment. Rob Andrew. Winterbottom. Again, trying to create the overlap and it is Moon that goes away. And it's all about possession. And the Wasps are able to uh, really even get small pickings. So a brace of tries for Richard Moon. Well set up by Peter Winterbottom. I think Pegler may have been suggesting it was a forward pass, but the referee was alongside the judge. And a long race in for Moon. And the Harlequins are in a very comfortable position now as the third conversion goes over from Thresher. And all of a sudden, with just seven minutes gone, it's 18-0 to the Harlequins. Well, yesterday you may have read how uh, London Irish bidding for promotion were 21-0 up at half-time in their 15 aside game and eventually were beaten quite dramatically by uh, rugby. So all things are possible in the game of rugby and especially in sevens. But 16 points is uh, 18 points now is a long way to come back from. Everton Davis. The tackles aren't being uh, taken and yet the players are being committed. This is Eagle. On the switch to Moon again. He's already had uh, one long run just now. Everton Davis with the bottom. Seizing his opportunity to play this final round and they're working the ball superbly well. Craig Luxton. But it's a different one. Uh, Stuart Tresher now to run it in as Tupman tripped before he could put in the challenge. And Harlequins are really running away with this in confident style from that very good start. So again, Winterbottom, it's a lovely dummy that uh, committed Andrew. And there were two men outside. Tupman covers, as you can see, as he rebounds off Luxton, he loses his footing, and that leaves Thresher to go in unopposed. So Thresher adds a try to his three conversions and installs himself as leading point scorer with 12 conversions and now a try. Not a bad afternoon's work. Stuart Tresher, who has represented England B against Australia, and has been in close contention for the full England fullback position. Paul Seven Eights made his Harlequin's debut in 1984. Well. And the 
this will make it 24. Curls it round. And it's all going right. It's all going one way. Still in, in the first half. And at the moment, Wasps looking dead and gone. The half-time whistle goes. Just one minute on the change round. Well, in theory, of course, if you can get 24 points in one half, you can get 24 or more in the next. So, Wasps may appear totally out of it, but stranger things have happened in seven-a-side rugby. With ten, minutes, ten minutes to play. However, the Wasps looking outgunned at the moment. The Harlequins playing some uh, superb seven. Well, it has been a great day. 